Thank you for clicking on this video pertaining to six nerve palsies. A six nerve palsy can be a significant diagnostic clue as to underlying systemic upset and it can be a sign of a life-threatening condition. That's why it is important that it is recognized early, investigated promptly and managed appropriately. If you'd like to learn more about this condition, please stay tuned. The main role of the sixth cranial nerve, remember there are 12 cranial nerves contained within the skull, the sixth one is responsible for controlling the muscle in the eye that is called the lateral rectus and the lateral rectus is responsible for helping you to move the eye outwards. When the lateral rectus is affected, it means that the eye is pulled in because the medial rectus has unopposed activity and due to this a patient will be unable to look out, their eye will be shifted inwards and when they try to look outwards they will experience double vision. The double vision is classically horizontal in nature which basically means they see two images side by side. This condition can occur both in adults and in children. The different cranial nerves contained within the skull have a different length from where they start to where they end. The sixth cranial nerve has the longest of any paths of any cranial nerves. Therefore, it goes without saying that the nerve is vulnerable to damage anywhere along its path. From the picture on screen now, you can see the long path of the sixth cranial nerve and the various structures that it passes by. And this makes it vulnerable to damage at various different points. The classic causes of why a sixth nerve palsy occurs can be broken down into in terms of children, congenital causes, in terms of adults, it's usually due to microvascular disease, which is usually attributable to an underlying diagnosis of diabetes. Other reasons why a sixth nerve palsy may be seen include things such as raised intracranial pressure, secondary to trauma. It can also occur as part of multiple cranial nerve diseases. It can also be seen in other conditions such as multiple sclerosis, giant cell arthritis. Please see my video about giant cell arthritis to learn more about that. It can also be seen in association with strokes. In children, important causes of a sixth nerve palsy not to be missed include meningitis and brain tumors. In terms of helping a clinician to understand whether the condition is of a certain etiology compared to another, one should appreciate that vascular causes tend to come on suddenly. So a diabetic patient suddenly becomes aware of double vision, whereas other conditions will have a slow lingering progression of symptoms and this usually implies something such as a tumour. The key thing to ensure that one does when faced with a possible sixth nerve palsy as an eye care practitioner, particularly in primary care, is to ensure that a prompt referral is made to secondary care and then in secondary care patients are meticulously evaluated to ensure that this is not something that is occurring as part of a generalized systemic process. So therefore, the clinical examination will involve a careful history, will involve a full eye examination, a full neurological examination, including examination of the cranial nerves, the upper limb, the lower limb. As mentioned, because of the potential underlying worrying etiologies associated with a sixth nerve palsy, it is important to ask about such symptoms in the history, including a full exploration of whether this could represent a sixth nerve palsy occurring in conjunction with a raised intracranial pressure scenario, so ask about headaches, ask about nausea vomiting, has it occurred as part of a underlying diagnosis of a malignancy, therefore ask about things such as weight loss, ask about things such as tinnitus. The diagnosis of a sixth nerve palsy is usually a clinical diagnosis, however, should there be any other clinical concerns or unanswered questions or features of the history that suggest an underlying worrying etiology, then further evaluation is warranted which may include 
a CT scan. In terms of patients who do have a diagnosis of a sixth nerve palsy, it is important to fully evaluate their cardiovascular system, check their bloods, check their diabetic control. And the reason for checking these is to try and optimize them in cases when they are not. In terms of a sixth nerve palsy, that is, as I said, commonly microvascular in origin, patients will be observed over a prolonged period of time, typically three to six months, to check for resolution. If the condition and the deviated eye is improving in terms of where it was initially, and the patient reports that the double vision is resolving, then these patients are helped through this period, which could involve a patch, which could involve prisms, to try and help them to obtain either single vision and clear vision, or to obtain binocular vision with the aid of prisms, therefore eliminating diplopia. If over this protracted three to six month period, the eye care practitioners and the orthoptics team find that these measurements are not improving and initially the patient did not have imaging of the brain, then at this stage it may be indicated. In the case of six nerve palsies that are not resolving and underlying systemic disease has been excluded, then longer term these patients may benefit from things such as Botox, they may benefit from things such as surgery. Thank you for watching this video about six nerve palsies. We've covered a lot of ground including what six nerve palsies are, typical causes for six nerve palsies, how they present and how they are managed. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up please click on the bell icon and please subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much. Until the next time, take care.